is a strange concept and often misunderstood. Described in the Oxford English Dictionary as a state of affairs or an event that seems deliberately contrary to what one expects, it's usually mistaken for coincidence or straight-up misfortune, even if it can involve both. In film productions, these deliberately contrary events usually occur as art imitating life in a tragic or amusing manner, providing an unexpected juxtaposition and drawing wry observations about how these events were ironic. However, because of film's very nature, it's rare that this ever actually happens. Movies are often about escapism, and therefore all sorts of heightened scenarios play out in front of the audience which just wouldn't happen in real life. As such, it's harder for ironic incidents to occur, so when they do, further infamy is often lent to them. So with that in mind, I'm Gareth from WhatCulture.com and here are 7 ironic problems that plagued famous movies. Number 7. The Noah Set Experiences Biblical Flooding Noah remains one of the most famous biblical characters, and it's not exactly hard to see why. The patriarch's ark-based plight touches the imagination like little else. And why wouldn't it? The story of a prophet and his family riding out a world and sin-cleansing storm in an ark with two of every animal remains popular because it's, well, a pretty compelling concept. Naturally, Hollywood's always looking to film good stories, and Darren Aronofsky soon came knocking. With a cast in place and Russell Crowe playing the eponymous hero, principal photography began in July 2012, and a gigantic arc set was built at the planting field Arboretum. On-location filming also took place at Long Island, and despite setbacks like Crowe needing to be rescued after going kayaking on his break, yep, that really happened, boxes were being ticked and the film was taking shape. Unfortunately, in October, Mother Nature decided to display her ironic hand as Hurricane Slash Storm Sandy lashed New York, causing flooding and extensive damage to the surrounding area. Obviously, this included the set of Noah. As a result, production was halted until the storm dissipated, meaning that a film entirely about a man and his family surviving a flood was derailed by a flood itself. Naturally, the internet exploded. Number 6. Brad Pitt ruptures his Achilles heel playing Achilles one of Hollywood's noble stabs at the increasingly moribund sword and sandal genre, 2003's Troy retold Homer's The Iliad in the only way Tinseltown knows how. With swooping melodrama, impossibly good-looking people, and no small amount of wooden acting. Chief among the offenders was leading star Brad Pitt, who took to the battlefield as the legendary Greek hero Achilles, and diced his way through credible accent work like his character did Trojans. Aside from being a fascinating character in an epic yarn from one of history's greatest poets, there's other reasons we remember Achilles today. And those reasons come from the source material itself. Having been dipped in the river Styx as a baby, the demigod Achilles was completely invulnerable unless you shot him in the heel he was dipped in by. Naturally, the Trojan Prince Paris manages this, ending his life, and giving us the phrase Achilles heel meaning someone's weak spot. This also led to the naming of the Achilles tendon, the tendon connecting the foot to the leg via the heel bone. As anyone who's ever ruptured their Achilles will tell you, it's horribly painful and strangely noisy to boot. Yeah, most of us injure our tendons in fairly generic circumstances. Playing squash, falling awkwardly, or, I don't know, tripping down the stairs. We don't rupture our Achilles while playing Achilles himself. Unfortunately, this was the misfortune that befell Pitt during the film's shoot, putting him out of action for seven months, and giving the internet a punchline that was almost too ridiculous to be true. But it was. Number 5. A director disowns a film about directors disowning films if you've ever seen the name Alan Smithy attached to a film and wondered who he was, then you've misunderstood one of Hollywood's strangest traditions. You see, Alan Smithy isn't a person. He's a pseudonym created by the Directors Guild of America which allows directors to distance themselves from films. In order to qualify for the moniker, the director must prove that they weren't able to exercise creative control over the project. Such was the situation Arthur Hiller found himself in come 1998, feeling that producer Joe Estahas had undue influence on the making of his film. 
In any other circumstances, such news would quickly pass into obscurity. Another sad tale of creative differences derailing a movie. However, in this instance, the film was entitled an Alan Smithy film, Burn Hollywood Burn and poked fun at this very practice. The film itself followed Eric Idle as the director of Trio, a Sylvester Stallone, Whoopi Goldberg, Jackie Chan vehicle described as worse than showgirls, and his efforts to distance himself from the film by replacing his credits with a pseudonym. Unfortunately, and here's the hilarious kicker, his name is Alan Smithy, meaning it's a fruitless endeavor. So instead, our noble protagonist steals it and threatens to burn his efforts. Needless to say, Burn Hollywood Burn was a terrible, terrible film, which took only $52,000 against a $10 million budget, and swept the board at the Razzies, bagging worst picture, worst screenplay, and worst new star. Number 4. Paul Walker perishes in a car accident while filming for Fast and Furious 7 Best known for his frequent turns as car-obsessed gearhead Brian O'Connor in the Fast and Furious franchise, Paul Walker was one recurring element, much like Vin Diesel's Dominic Toretto, that fans enjoyed catching up with as each installment piled on. As Connor, a cop who, over the course of the series, leaves behind his dutiful life as an undercover detective to pull off extensive heists and race turbocharged vehicles down narrow streets, Walker was never anything but affable. As a poster boy for a series that literally celebrates its own shallowness, he was perfect. Though there's no denying he played Connor with a wry sense of self-awareness, just happy to be part of the ride. Given his tendency to live life in the fast lane on screen then, it's somewhat ironic that Paul Walker's untimely death came as the result of a car crash, which occurred when he and a friend were cruising at speeds of up to 100 miles per hour back in December 2013. Riding shotgun in a doomed Porsche Carrera GT, Walker was killed when the vehicle collided with a tree. Though he was only a passenger at the time of his death, there are undeniable comparisons to be made between the tragic incident and the explosive, adrenaline-clad sequences inherent in his most famous film ventures. Number 3. Kristen Stewart embroils herself in a real-life love triangle. In July 2012, Kristen Stewart was all over the tabloids and gossip mags. But why is this? Well, it had recently been discovered that while filming Snow White and the Huntsman, in which she plays a revisionist armor-clad Snow White, Stewart was having an affair with the director Rupert Sanders. This was especially big news to celeb-centric correspondents because for four years, Stewart had been in a relationship with Twilight co-star Robert Pattinson after meeting on set, and they'd rarely been off the magazine front pages ever since. So with a high-profile relationship on the rocks, the writers circled like sharks around their prey. And things eventually came to a head when Stewart offered a very public apology to Pattinson in People magazine. The whole thing was manna from heaven in showbiz circles, and many virtual trees worth of copy were written covering the pair's post-affair interactions, also granting Sanders a level of fame slash infamy superseding his previous reputation. As a competent if unmemorable director. But to, let's say, seasoned irony watchers, this was just Stewart's film history repeating itself in real life. To remind you of Twilight's plot, something I apologize for in advance, it involved Stewart's Bella Swan wringing whole hours of dramatic mileage out of umming and ahhing between her two suitors before eventually ending her dalliance with a werewolf and shacking back up with Edward Cullen. So basically, if you replace a vampire who creepily hangs around at high schools with his real-life counterpart and a perennially shirtless man with Sanders, you've got to admit there's certain similarities. Number 2. Jeff Bridges is downloaded into a computer in reality for Tron Legacy Tron is the very epitome of a cult film, in which Jeff Bridges' Kevin Flynn is bodily downloaded into a computer mainframe, and must avoid being de while attempting to thwart his plagiarizing business rival from inside his own system. It's a little odd, is what I'm saying. Wind forward to 2012, and Bridges found himself being downloaded into a computer again for Mouse House in 4's sequel, Tron Legacy. Only this time, it happened in real life, presumably seeing Seeking to take advantage of their marquee star. By this point, Bridges had won an Oscar for Crazy Heart and permanently ensconced himself in our hearts as the dude. Disney elected to make him both the hero and villain of the piece. 
The hero was actual Flynn, who disappeared in 1989 while doing cutting-edge research, but had aged as appropriately as Bridges. However, the villain was a whole different kettle of fish. The antagonist was Clue, a program replication of Flynn who possessed the majestic mullet and facial features of a 35 years younger Bridges. Obviously, de-aging has never been a problem in Hollywood before. Makeup can perform all sorts of miracles in Tinseltown. But that wasn't enough for director Joseph Kaczynski, who, unsatisfied with the first special makeup young Flynn face he was offered by practical effects god Rick Baker, decided to download Bridges' face from 1985's Against All Odds. He then digitally mapped it onto a stunt double trained to replicate the actor's moves and mannerisms. If this sounds bonkers, it's because it is, taking almost two years to get right and helping delay the film for what eventually turned out to be a dead-eyed uncanny valley monstrosity. Number 1. Brandon Lee's Crow is impervious to bullets, but gets shot on set in real life. The Crow was supposed to be Brandon Lee's star-making role. The son of legendary martial arts master Bruce Lee, Brandon played Eric Draven, an undead guitarist seeking vengeance for his fiancée's brutal rape and murder. Obviously, if he'd gone back as his regular self, he'd probably have been killed again. But to this obvious conundrum, the movie had a solution. Upon returning, Draven could heal himself almost instantly after suffering all manner of physical punishment. Atop this, he could communicate telepathically with crows and felt no pain at all, utilizing his newfound abilities to take revenge on the gang who murdered his fiancée. The Crow opened up to good reviews and would have gone down as a better effort in pulpy vengeance flicks ripe for a cult following later down the line. Yet tragically, it didn't, and instead the film is now notorious for causing the death of Brandon Lee. In a terrible accident involving a prop gun loaded with an undischarged, unchecked dummy round, instead of the regulation blanks. Lee was shot from just over 10 feet away, and despite being rushed to hospital and six hours of surgery, he was unable to be saved. However, despite Paramount pulling their funding out of the film and the withdrawal of Lee's co star and accident witness Sophia Sheenus, The Crow, now funded by Miramax, made it into cinemas courtesy of script rewrites and reshoots. It's still a good film and worthy of your time, but the scenes where Lee gets repeatedly shot in a showcase of his supernatural powers obviously don't provide the visceral thrills that were originally intended. Instead, it's a distinctly uneasy and upsetting experience, truth be told. And that's our list. Know of any other ironic problems that plague famous movies? Let us know all about them in the comments section below, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button. Also, be sure to head on over to whatculture.com and click on some more or awesome articles just like the one this video is based on. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com, thank you very much for watching, and I'm sure I'll see you very, very soon.